Hello and welcome to the Microbe Hunter Macroscopy Podcast. My name is Oliver Kim. So hi, hello and welcome. Um, I want to respond uh, today to a question from one of my YouTube viewers um, and uh, I'm just going to read the question to you and then I would like to uh, simply respond to it and give you my opinion. Uh, thank you very much for the detailed explanations. Um, he or she is referring uh, to my video where I described on how to buy a microscope. Um, it continues, um, it opened my eyes, it is so hard to get this information. One more thing that is not clear for me and that stops me from buying a microscope is the preparations of samples. Um, it needs to be cut uh, into thin slices, then you have to color it somehow. Um, there are many different techniques, so that's too complex. Uh, probably you have a video about this too. Okay, first of all, thank you very much for the question. I think it's an important question. And uh, I think uh, your assumptions or the things that you wrote into the question is you're all right. Um, yes, uh, sample preparation can be quite complex and yes there are uh, many different techniques and yes staining um, that's the coloring with different stains is also a, a science in itself okay so uh, all of the things that you write here I can basically I, I, I agree with you however um, you are not required to do all of these things if you want to do hobby or amateur microscopy um, so um, and in my YouTube channel I deliberately tried to uh, um, show you methods that are very easily done um, which are not so complicated so you do not need a fully featured uh, home laboratory with many chem chemicals and and, uh, and and whatever yeah it's not necessary um, you can do amateur microscopy also very simply by taking some of the specimens and simply putting them onto the microscope slide and uh, then uh, looking at them through the microscope as a matter of fact I think uh, many of the um, more interesting specimens for example water samples where you actually see live uh, animals and, and cells and so on um, actually they don't require um, any specimen preparation as a matter of fact you shouldn't because this would actually kill the, uh, the organisms um, but I want to uh, I don't know uh, yeah I, I just want to give you a little bit more background information here um, what you are referring to with the slicing and with the staining and all of this uh, this is a method or these are methods that are very commonly used in in the field of histology histology is the study of tissues and very often in research and also in medicine um, what you do is, is you have uh, to basically you take a, a, a biopsy uh, that's a, basically a piece of, of, of uh, some tissue from a person that got ill and then you have to kind of uh, put it under the microscope and uh, these uh, specimens these biopsies are very often quite large okay so um, they are too large at least uh, to be placed directly on a microscope slide because uh, objects that are on the microscope slide have to be extremely thin they have to be transparent and they also have to be uh, sufficiently small and often the samples are not that small and they're quite big okay so you somehow have to get them into this uh, very uh, into an appropriate uh, yeah you have to process it, you have to process them appropriately so that you can actually look at them and in histology what you do is, is I'm, I'm just simply going to take you roughly through the steps simply to show you how how complex this is but then again this is not what you have to do unless this is something that interests you okay what you have to do is you have to take the sample uh, I don't know a piece of tissue okay and then what the first thing that you have to do is, is you have to um, you have to fix it and fixing means that you preserve it in such a way that all of the chemical processes um, in, in cells they kind of stop and the, the cells are kind of frozen um, and so that they cannot um, yeah they're preserved in other words okay and uh, there are certain chemical fixatives that you do and you have to place the specimen for a couple of days into this solution and then the solution will kind of uh, soak itself it will diffuse into the specimen the little piece of tissue um, and um, this will basically then um, preserve uh, the cells okay uh, but then it's like this that um, you take it out uh, after a couple of days uh, but then it's still very large okay Okay, um, so what you have to do is you, you, you can kind of have to have to slice it. You have to microtome it. Uh, microtoming means that you make very, very thin cuts using a device. Um, and the cuts can be, let's say, I don't know, 10 to 20 micrometers uh, thick. Okay, so they're quite, uh, quite thin. Um, and the problem, however, is, is that you uh, cannot so easily do that because the specimen itself, the tissue itself, um, is, is too soft. Okay, so it's going to bend and it's, it's, it's going to, yeah. So you have to kind of support, give it some kind of physical support. So 
So what you do is, is you have to embed it first in a, in, in a block of paraffin. It's a, it's a wax-like substance. So you have to put it into, uh, into paraffin. But, oh, I forgot something. You cannot do that uh, because there is still a liquid fixative in here. So what you have to do is, is you have to take the liquid fixative out first. You have to dry it first. See, that's the step I forgot. You have to dry it first. And you do that by placing it into an increasing sequence of alcohol concentrations. So for day one, you put it into, I don't know, <clears throat> a certain percentage of alcohol. And then in day two, you increase the alcohol percentage. And every time you kind of slowly replace uh, the water with alcohol. And you have to do that. If you do this too quickly, then it's going to cause the whole thing to shrink. Okay, so that's the second step is dehydration. Okay, and then now it comes, now comes embedding. Okay, I, I almost forgot this one step. Um, and then when you embed it in, in paraffin, uh, then you have the whole tissue in a block of paraffin. And uh, then you basically you can microtome it and you can put it into the machine and you can make thin sections and you cut, you can cut it. And then you, you have to uh, basically remove the paraffin. You, uh, paraffin, you use some kind of an organic solvent to do that. Um, uh, somewhere in this whole process, you also have to uh, stain the whole thing. This thing, I don't know, this takes day, days, if not weeks. Uh, with all of the waiting time okay and this is actually something that um, is too I would say too advanced for most amateur microscopists and therefore I'm not doing it and many other amateurs are also not doing it unless this is something that really interests you and uh, unless this is part of your hobby okay um, so this is basically the the kind of the the, 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 the background a little bit here why this is uh, the complexity is, is really not some it simply makes it not feasible um, to do, be used uh, for for yeah, for, for amateur, for hobby purposes. Also because some of the chemicals are not really healthy, okay? All of those organic solvents, it's not something that you want to have standing around, uh, yeah, in, in, yeah <laughs> in, in your room, okay? So uh, so let's forget about this uh, for right now. Um, if you uh, want, uh, so if, uh, if you're interested in, in, in looking at those samples, I recommend actually that you buy yourself a set of uh, professionally made microscope slides, uh, which have already been uh, properly prepared and stained and everything and the lab has been doing that the reason why you can buy so many of these things is because uh, they are used in medical training in medicine um, so you can buy yourself uh, um, and also for educational use in schools of course so my advice is that you get yourself a slide box um, which contains already different a different assortment of different plant and, and animal tissues um, all of them already properly microtomed and stained and, 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 and everything okay um, so that means you're not missing out on these things uh, but you're kind of taking a little bit of shortcut because you're simply just buying them ready-made okay so uh, what can you basically now uh, if you have a microscope now what can you actually look at um, and there are so many things that's uh, kind of difficult for me to to actually uh, yeah to summarize this but I would say one of the really common things is is, is uh, the observing of, of pond water uh, because there are so many microorganisms in there which are also quite large and therefore can be easily seen and they move around and they really look like aliens um, and <laughs> they're kind of interesting to look at okay especially also if you have children and so on it's it's really interesting the movement and the color and all of those the activity that's going on and what i really like about uh, looking at pond water and other uh, samples that i get from the natural environment is because you don't really always know what to expect um, i've got some pond water samples now sitting here right next to me and uh, if I put it under the microscope, sometimes I expect to see a lot, but actually I don't, and uh, vice versa. And sometimes, uh, just the other day, I've seen a whole colony of Vorticella. These are ciliates um, that are stalked. Uh, they basically, they, they're on the stalk and they retract quickly. Totally did not expect so many of them, really. But they somehow reproduced in this water sample on my windowsill here. And uh, that's basically, yeah, something totally unexpected. So uh, my advice would be is, is that if you want to pick up amateur or hobby microscopy, um, focus on the things that you actually see in your everyday life around you, okay? Um, and try to um, put uh, put them under the microscope um, and uh, try to put them into a, a into a form that they're observable. So you have to you might have to cut them, but uh, then try to cut them simply using a sharp knife or using scissors or, or something like this. Um, but you do not always need um, advanced equipment to do that. Okay. So I'm going to show you also some methods then on maybe in the, one of the YouTube videos that I'm going to make on, on how to actually make uh, very thin cuts uh, simply without even using any additional equipment than a sharp knife. It, it is possible. It's a lot of trial and error, not so easy. Maybe the results are not 
not quite that good, but it is possible. It uh, depends also a little bit or quite a lot actually on, on the specimen. But especially plant uh, tissues are can be cut uh, relatively easily um, if you're patient and uh, thin enough that you can actually observe it under the the compound microscope. Okay, so that is uh, kind of this kind of uh, wraps it up. I got a little bit carried away with some technical details at the beginning of this episode with ex trying to explain you all the process of histology here. Uh, but um, essentially what I just want to make clear is, is, is um, as long as the specimen is sufficiently small, sufficiently thin and sufficiently transparent, um, you can actually put it uh, directly under the microscope. And if it is not, and I think that is something that I should say, then you probably want to put it under a stereo microscope. That is really something that uh, um, I also want to yeah, encourage people to get a little bit more involved is, is stereo microscopy. Um, and uh, because stereo microscopy uh, allows you to look at the specimens directly without any processing at all. You find an insect somewhere, a fly, you just take it and you put it under the stereo microscope and you get a three dimensional, um, very uh, immersive and imp an impressive uh, image. Okay. Um, so this is something that I would definitely recommend. Um, you do not always need complex laboratory technique. Um, techniques, um, a little bit of lab work, lab work makes uh, the things of course fun, but I have to admit in most cases uh, my microscope slides that I make can be prepared in less uh, than one minute or two minutes. I take the sample out, I put it on the slide, put cover glass on top, it goes under the microscope. Okay, I think uh, for today that's, uh, that's enough. I wish you a nice day, happy microbe hunting and bye bye.